Hi, and welcome back to Football Made Simple. Cristiano Ronaldo goes beyond being a generational player. He's one of the few players that will go down in history as one of the best to ever do it. So, after almost a decade at Real, he decided to leave, and one does not simply replace a player like this. So, in this video we'll take a look at Real's first season without Ronaldo. But just quickly, if you're new around here and want to see more football videos, go ahead and hit subscribe and if you enjoyed the video, a like would be great. Feel free to drop video suggestions below as well. Now, let's get into it. In order to assess the difference in a Ronaldo-less Real, we'll be using some statistics and other tactical factors. And a good place to get both of these is today's video sponsor, OneFootball. OneFootball is a great app to keep you up to date on football news around the world. So if you want to support the channel and get a great free app at the same time, go ahead and download it through the link in the description. So in this video we're going to look at a few key pillars. How big was Ronaldo's influence on the team? How did they look to plug the gap? How did their managers change their tactics to deal with not having Ronaldo? And finally an overall assessment of what went wrong and right. When assessing his impact, we'll focus on his last three seasons. Tactically, it's well known that in the last few seasons he's been drifting more central and higher up the pitch. In the first season under Zidane, the front three operated extremely high up the pitch, and Benzema would be the player who would usually drop back in the defensive phase. In Zidane's final season, he moved towards a pure 4-4-2 diamond, with Ronaldo and Benzema being the exclusive forwards. But the bottom line is, Ronaldo was now taking up the higher position centrally and Benzema was more of a link player. But let us know if you want to see a full video on Ronaldo's evolution. Statistically, in the last 3 seasons Madrid scored 310 goals, and of these, Ronaldo scored 28%, or 86 goals. He also took most of the team's shots in each season. And of course, all things being equal, the more shots a team takes, the more likely they are to score. And Ronaldo was taking 34% of their shots. Pair this with an expected goals or assists of over 1 per game during that time, and you see positionally they needed a player who would be high up the pitch spearheading things as well as taking statistically dangerous shots. So how did they try to replace him? Well, there's a few ways you can try to replace an influential player. You could try to buy roughly a direct replacement, you could invest it around the squad and try to improve the team as a whole, or depend on existing players to step up to fill the role. Madrid used a strange combination of all three. They hoped Bale, Benzema and Asensio would all increase their output now that they weren't defaulting to Ronaldo. They also invested in the squad with Courtois and Odrio Zola and more, whilst bringing in Mariano and Vinicius in the attacking end. We'll start with Mariano. Mariano had been a Madrid product, even debuting under Zidane before leaving for Lyon. At Lyon, he formed a deadly trident alongside Fakir and Depay, and he scored 18 goals in the league. He was a sole striker in a 4-3-3 so it was expected he would do the same thing at Madrid, making him, positionally at least, the most direct replacement. Like Ronaldo, he liked to play on the shoulder, using his pace and power to try get behind the defence, which would be ideal for the counter-attacking style of football. With Ronaldo gone, Madrid needed a more genuine 9, and unlike Benzema, Mariano wouldn't drop and would rather be on the end of the moves instead. It made sense. At Lyon, he was averaging a respectable 3.03 shots per game. Vinicius was the other attacking signing. He was signed a season earlier, but it didn't become official until last season. Vinicius was more like the earlier version of Ronaldo, liking to hug the left wing before using his pace and dribbling when moving up the pitch and attacking the box. Unlike Ronaldo, he's more of a creator than a scorer, attacking the byline to provide the assist more often, and when the team was defending, he was willing to drop deep. One factor which would influence how these players performed is the managerial style. Madrid went through three managers, so we'll briefly take a look at the tactics of each. Well, before the season even started, Madrid were off to a bad start, with Lopetegui being sacked on the eve of a World Cup for taking the Madrid job during competition preps. Such an exit put him on the back foot in the media as well as in the dressing room. Tactically, Lopetegui tried to make drastic style changes very quickly. He used a 4-3-3 with the front three of Benzema, Asensio and Bale, but was always keen to bring on Mariano. Much like his Spain side, Lopetegui wanted to turn a Madrid side who has spent the majority of the last decade as a counter-attacking side into a possession team. He wanted slow build-up play where triangles were formed around the pitch to give the team options. A fairly rigid system, but one that could work well when a team is used to the style. He would overload one side of the pitch, trying to create passing angles, but he always kept a man wide in case they needed to switch. When functioning well, keeping the players in close proximity means an easy press if they do lose the ball. 
Up front, he gave the front three creative freedom. But the problem is, this system needs quick passing to be successful, and that's brought about by players knowing exactly where to be. This was not the case as Madrid was still adjusting. Lopetegui played Modric high, meaning Cruz did all the ball progression, so when he was man-marked they struggled to move up the pitch. So as a result, they were often dispossessed with one side of the pitch overloaded, and Lopetegui used Modric extremely high, so this left a gaping hole to counter into which happened often. Cruz was the metronome, so from here he would have the responsibility to try stop the counter. Even high up the pitch, chance creation was left to Modric, with Cruz told to stay deep, which isn't his game as he said himself. His spell ended prematurely due to poor results, although it's interesting to note that during his time they scored less than XG suggested as well as conceding more often, so they were well off their expected points. Up next was Solari. He didn't have much experience, but he had done well in the Castilla setup, developing players like Hakimi, Regulon, and Valverde. He was initially the caretaker, but La Liga rules meant that you have to have a permanent manager within two weeks, so almost by default he got the role. He did have some success, a lot of that was to do with his ability to man-manage, similar to Zidane. He also dealt with the politics well, selecting Perez's signings in Bale, Vinicius and Courtois. But he did make some tactical changes. He put a lot more faith in Vinicius, who liked to hug the left wing, but his need for width reduced the impact Marcelo could have, so Regulon came in. Vinicius' presence on the left meant Modric could be more offset to the right, giving the midfield better coverage when trying to stop counter-attacks. But the most important change was the stylistic one, with a return to a quicker transitional style rather than slow build up in order to take advantage of Bale and Asensio's pace, as well as reducing possession losses in dangerous positions. But all these were more of tweaks with no major changes. As Ramon Calderon confirmed, there were no major differences with Madrid now overperforming their expected points where previously they had underperformed. And then came the return of Zidane to cap a crazy season. It's fair to say his second spell wasn't nearly as successful as the first. His first time round, he averaged around 2.28 points per game, and that dropped to 1.5 in his second spell. It's hard to assess his changes, aside from benching Bale, because the period he came in meant there was not much to play for, so player motivation would have affected results. But it was a poor end to the season, and in fact his 11 game record was almost exactly equal to Lopetegui's spell. But what of the other players who were meant to step up in Ronaldo's absence? Well, Mariano was a strange case. He only played 13 times, of which only 3 were starts and scored just 3 goals. The reason for this was an injury record which hampered him throughout the season. At Lyon, he missed only 2 matches through injury, but at Madrid that shot up to 18, making him hard to assess due to a small sample size. But with Madrid splashing out this summer, maybe his signing was meant to be a stopgap for the season, and at 21 million he wasn't a big expense and could potentially be sold on even for a profit. Vinicius in the second half of the season had an impact on the left, making 18 appearances in all. At 18, there's space to improve his output, with his decision making meaning he only had 2 goal contributions. But he did provide a threat with over 2 shots per game and more importantly, his over 2 dribbles per game moving the team up the pitch. But his chance creation wasn't great either, with 0.3 crosses per game and 0.8 key passes per game. But at 18, he looks a prospect. This was also meant to be a sense of season to step up to the next level with regular starts. And he started regularly on the wings, being given the freedom to drift across the pitch. But instead of elevating his game, he trended down in most attacking stats other than dribbles, and soon he fell out of favour as he had limited impact down the left. But one man who did lift his game, especially in the early part of the season, was Benzema. He increased both his goals and assists from the prior season as now he is playing closer to the goal. His shots per game increased, as a result making him their most dangerous player. There was always a feeling that Bale was brought in as the long term heir to Ronaldo and it was his season to prove that, but instead he regressed, not only not doing as well as Ronaldo, but actually worse than he did the previous season. He scored less, took less shots, less key passes and even his motivation dwindled. As a result, Real had one of their worst seasons to date, finishing with just 68 points, their lowest since 2001, and finished further behind Barcelona than they had ever done. They were blunt in attack, with 63 goals being their least since 2000, and the 52 they conceded is their most in a decade. In La Liga, they lost 12 games as a result, which was their worst since 1974. 
So overall, Real's down season cannot be placed entirely on the sale of Ronaldo, but it does go to show how difficult replacing an elite player can be. But what do you think the reason for this season was? Let me know in the comments below. But that's all for today and remember, keep it simple.